can you tell us the comparison <laughs> from like draft picks from then to like how it is now? I noticed that there was like, before like what we said, there was no social media, it was Friendster, it was, you know, MySpace for you, but now everyone can be able to point, click, record easily and they can just, you know, work, develop their own mixtape, you know, they can develop their own videos that they can be able to send out or even share. Whereas with other people, they had to, you know, create it, they had to send it out. It was basically on a VHS. So what's, how was that for you when you were going from, you know, college basketball to the PBA as compared to now, to like this generation? Well, like what you said, it wasn't even like a, it wasn't even on a USB, it was on a VHS. You know, my, 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 my video of two games were circulated by an agent in the Philippines, rest in peace, Cheeky, and um, another agent company, Pac Rim, Don Raimundo. Uh, those guys were an uh, integral part of my development also with my development going to the PBA. But they just circled. It, I don't even know how it happened, to be honest with you. I, don't, I think they just went from one team to another, and then it was just a, a word of mouth. Word of mouth. Yeah, so actually, I'm the last. 2005 was the last draft where if you have Filipino heritage coming from anywhere, if you're Filipino, kung Filipino ka talaga, you have a Filipino passport, you were born in the Philippines, uh, you don't have to go to the D-League, yung D-League nila, or you don't have to go to amateur. That was the last year. So after that year, they, the PBA mandated that because it was so difficult. Like I said, it was so difficult. So they mandated you to go to Yung PBL. Yung PBL is like a G League. So because it was so difficult that the PBA was like, okay, stay here for one year para makita namin kayo. So we don't waste your, our money on your asses. You know what I'm saying? Sorry yeah. if I curse. They're, they're right. Sorry. Uh, minus one ako done. <laughs> no, but like, yeah, that, that's, uh, that's, that's how it worked. So in 2005 was the last time, like, that whole circulation of tapes, of like secret, secrecy of draft picks, that's the last time it happened. The next year, you had to, Filipino, non-Filipino, whoever you are, you're going to the D-League or you're going to like some type of semi-pro for them to scout you for them to know where their investment is going. That's what it's for. That's that's what the D-League and the G-League is. I mean, the D-League or the MPBL, those semi-team, semi-leagues, those are for PBA teams to, because, you know, they're investing money on you. You know what I'm saying? They're investing a hundred grand on you or, or whatever they're investing. So they want to see you. So they put that mandated uh, rule. Did you know you so were... I got lucky. So you... I got lucky. I Sorry, on your on your that. draft, uh, did you know you were going to San Miguel or was it a surprise? Uh, oh, no, sorry, San Miguel, St. Lucia, right? St. Lucia was a surprise. Yeah. yeah. Did you yeah. know you were going there or uh, um, was it up in the air? Uh, First round, second overall pick, mm. right? So. I was up in the air. Actually, you know, when I, I, I landed August 17th and the first thing that they told me was don't drink the water. <laughs> like, <laughs> you got to try out tomorrow. You got like a like a combine, like a like a draft tryout, and don't drink the water. And my agent dropped me off at Wak Wak. If you guys if you guys know where that's at, Wak Wak. And there was back in two thousand and five. There was now in the Philippines. Fifteen years later, there's been a lot of development. There's been one of the leading uh, developing countries in Southeast Asia. So there's a lot of development with buildings condominiums i think this is the best place for pogos to come and stay so they could work 50 percent off for the wages so before back in the day in 2005 man what there was nothing i didn't even there wasn't even a starbucks down the street for me yo there was like yo it was walk walk the golf course and there was one pizza spot open and it's still open now sir michael's pizza and i remember i would walk down there uh, before my my combine, I'd walk down there because I had no phone, I had no jack, I had no cell phone, I had I couldn't get in touch with anybody, and the the internet shop was literally two kilometers or almost two miles walk, and I was like, should I get on this taxi? I was like, man, I don't even got money. I don't <laughs> got money. I haven't even I haven't even exchanged money yet. I'm still trying to pay in dollars, like you know. Ignorant as that sounds, I should have done it in the airport. But yeah, it was 
it was difficult. It was difficult. Going back to your question, like, yeah, I just came in, literally, boom, <laughs> 17th. Uh, the combine was the 18th and 19th, like not knowing anything. We did a few drills for formality. Uh, they took our height. They took our, like, you know, it was just, it was just for formality's sake, like, you know, stuff that you just randomly do just to see what your stock, what stock or <laughs> came in. And I didn't know. I was sitting down. There was 60 people trying out. And you know, 60, 60, imagine 60 kids in one gym. Now imagine 60 grown ass men. Sorry, Doc. My, uh, sorry, Direct. Mine is two now. Okay, don't worry. <laughs> imagine 60, 60 grown men in one gym trying to fight for 10, spot, 10 slots or 20 slots. Now imagine that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, there was. You know, there was the Philams on one side. You know, there was there was a slew of us back then. There was like six. That was a slew. Imagine now there's like 20. So there was six or five. There's five. Mike Hoper, me. Yeah, that was it. it was Mike Hoper, me, Jay Washington. Yeah, there was three. There was three. And we sat next to each other. You know how that goes. You know how Filipinos be at. Like, they be, they be <laughs> gravitating, you know. You know, you know, you know, you know, you know, I'm going to go there. <laughs> there, was the, there was locals, there was the Bisayas, and there was the other people. There was the, there was the locals, there was the, there was, I remember then there's the UAAP All-Stars, you know, the guys that played in the UAAP over here, they got, you know, they got some love in the UAAP, they sat next to each other. The Philam sat next to each other, and, you know, the... My Besaya and my Taga Provincia, they sat next to each other. So it was like, yo, we're trying to get money. I guess we're going to have to kill every <laughs> single possession. <laughs> but other than that, I was so jet lagged. I didn't even know I could, I, I didn't even know if I told you I could make, I made a basket, to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like, we were playing five on five, and I probably got the ball. And then this is the sad part because I'm a point guard. I probably got the ball once because everybody was like, yo, yo, I'm trying to make money. <laughs> yeah. This is my shot. I'm trying to get out of poverty. Yeah. I'm, trying, I'm like, yo, I'm trying to make, you know, everybody's trying to make it. So I probably got the ball once or twice. I probably got the ball once or twice. And I was just like, okay, like, you know, once I got the ball, I shot it just like everybody else, you know, so... It was difficult, but I guess the, I mean, it was all for formality and I didn't know I was going to go to Santa Lucia. Shout out to Boss Buddy and uh, Coach Al Francis Chua that, you know, that drafted me. Shout out to them. So I didn't know. To, I Sorry, I got off tangent. You're talking, you're talking about was. money, right? Um, how was your rookie year and what did you do with your first paycheck? I paid my loans. I paid oh, okay. My loans. Responsible. I I pay my loans like like they have this thing where where you get uh, it's like a gratuity, 30 percent gratuity, which means like if you sign for your first year or every year you sign, it's like mandated by PBA uh, sanctions that you're right. You have a right to get 30 percent of your annual income, your one year or your annual income. (laughs) So that's pretty big, you know, from not having any money to having money. You know, if you get ten dollars, if your contract is ten dollars and they give you three dollars off the bat, your your first month, you'd be like, damn, oh, that's a lot of money. So I'm just saying, like, I, as soon as I got that that thirty percent of my first year, I I literally just put it all in my loan. I said, man, you you know how loans work. I don't know how loans work in Canada, but for school, but for me, they had this grace period when you're out oh, of yeah. school. We you have, have that too. That too. I was, <laughs> Oh, they got that too. Yeah, okay. they got that they too. Got you guys too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> let's talk. Let's that talk about your cur- your career, like your playing career. What did you What did you learn from? Uh, I guess coming from the states and playing in the PBA. Like, how was the playing styles different? What was a reality check in terms of playing style? Oh, uh, it was. It's a lot different. I mean, any anybody coming from a collegiate to, you know, you're gonna play pro. It's a lot physical anywhere in the world. I'm not just going to say it's in the PBA or anything like that. Like, uh, it's just, it was different, different physically. It was different. Like most, 
most of the players that you're playing against are refining their skill year after year after year. It's a compounded refinery for them. So when you're coming in with open canvas and, you know, you haven't been working on your, your game religiously for the last 10 years and you match up with somebody like me that's been doing it for 15 years, I'm going to see a lot of gap in your game that you're not, you haven't, you don't even know. So that's what I came in. I, you know, I came into the PBA and I had three forty-three greatest players on my team off the bat. A Marlo Aquino, you guys can look these guys up. They're monsters. They're savages. Marlo Aquino, Kenneth Deremdez, and Dennis Espino. Shout out to Paulo Mendoza too. So when I came into the league, these guys were like perennial all-stars. These guys were perennial sent, uh, RP team guys. Uh, uh, one of they've had rings. They've had championships. They've had MVPs. So I came in to a really veteran team and I'm just, they didn't, and you know what, it, back then it was difficult because it was even more difficult because like there was a, there was a little rift between, I'm, I'm boy to be exact, to, to let you guys know, I'm born in the Philippines, so I'm, I'm boy, but you know, coming from the States, they had a rift between Phil Ams taking jobs of local Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And these guys are the forefront. These guys were the forefront of that battle. So I had to mesh with them, not only in the game, but I had to mesh with them like, yo, I'm Filipino too. You know what I'm saying? It just so happens that, you know, my mom and my dad migrated to the States for just for better work, just like everybody else. You know what I'm saying? So once they figured that out, like, yo, they're just trying to, I'm just trying to make a living like them. And I'm trying to uh, like, you know, just trying to blend and mesh and um, make Pakisama. Pakisama is a huge word, you guys, if you guys don't know that. The listeners out there, if you guys don't know what Pakisama is, you're trying to go to the Philippines. You guys better learn that word. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it was difficult physically, mentally, and, and after what you do, like, you know, like we had practice two hours, two and a half hours. And, you know, back then when you're in college, you got two hours and then you got to go to like, I got to go to classes, you know, I got to go biology. I got to go to anatomy after, you know, now after this, you know, after from 10 to 12, what do you do next? That's the most difficult part for guys coming in. Like what's next, you know, what's next? What do you, what are you occupying your time with? And so it's not just physically that was, that was different. It's more of like the lifestyle that was different also. You know, you got to check yourself ASAP. You know, as soon as you get, as soon as you become a pro, it's like practice doesn't, doesn't stop after practice, you know. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. So, you know, uh, you're going to get left behind instantly, instantly. So that's usually what I tell guys. And that's what I experienced. And they told me that. And I saw, I saw from them, it's like after they practice, they eat a little bit and they go to the weight room and after that they'll probably go some shots so it's a con the day is continuous with basketball you know so if you if you just think it's just two hours and you know i'm gonna get on the sticks and play for the next five hours or call of duty or get on 2k and play for five hours it ain't Not like that. that it ain't like that it ain't like that i wish it was i wish it was because i want uh, you know I want to get on the sticks and play five, six hours. I wish it was, but it's just not. It's just not. <laughs> uh, so, you know, speaking about refinery year after year, um, we're not going to expose your age. By the way, happy belated birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's, all, it's awesome turning 33. You know? All right, there you go. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep it. There. We'll keep it. We'll keep it in the on I heard the 30, bit. right? You said 30? What is, well, I just heard 30. 30, yeah, there you go. There you go, 30. So now that you, from, you know, from being a rookie and, you know, taking in all that you've learned and absorbed from vets and you becoming one of the vets now for San Miguel Beerman, like what is it that you now teach rookies coming in and what have you learned and how do you, how are you oh. able to, you know, be able to feed off that energy oh. or give off that energy to them? The energy I give off to rookies and most, uh, and I think I could, they could attest to this too. It's just, you know, I can't tell you much. 
I can't tell you much because I know I know I knew the new millennium kids, the the new kids on the block. They want to learn for themselves, you know. And I get it. You got you know you want to make mistakes, which is weird. I'll go back to this quote later. You know, uh, knowledge is learning from your mistake. Wisdom is learning from another person's mistake. Right? Mm. Experiences. Yeah. So there's a big difference between knowledge and wisdom. But I'll get back to that later. Mm-hmm. But you know, they want to make their own mistakes. So I just put on the work. You know, if you wanna if you wanna be about this life, I'm not gonna tell you about it because you know, you like I said, you guys wanna make mistakes. Everybody wants to make mistakes, their own mistakes and their own path. But I'm gonna continue doing what I do. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna keep knocking and I'm gonna keep chopping on that red wood like I've been doing. And if you wanna get on board you could you could like get on this lifestyle with me and I could guide you through there but you got to ride this wave if you're not going if you don't want to ride this wave you know direct you're going to hate me I just can't fuck with you <laughs> I think that's uh, I, I think that's a good way to end the you. first part of um <laughs> of our episode cuz I was we be, like Sorry. time just flies Sorry. man time just flies <laughs> so this is the first part but um we'd love to have you uh well the part 2 will be all about you know uh your your projects that you're up to. So I guess uh, yeah, how should we you. end this episode? And obviously we, we'll see him back. So on the next episode, we'll still have Alex talk more about Phil M Nation Select and all the projects that he's been worked on and some accomplishments also that's been happening. So stay tuned guys on this episode. Mm-hmm.